comfortable with it. I'm actually going to put it right here and tie it. Thank you. Childhood is a period of adventure, amazement, and awe. But for me, it was also a period of strife, discord, upheaval. My hometown in India was a great place to grow up. My elementary school was small. The teachers were accessible, affable, attentive. There were not many pupils in the class, and we could easily connect and have a closer bond with each other. My best friend, Mustafa, was from a separate neighborhood a few blocks away from ours. Although we followed different religion, our families were close. We were always invited by them to Eid al-Fitr, festival celebrated by the Muslim to mark the uh, end of month-long fasting. There was a lot of food, and I relished the mouth-watering dishes prepared by his mom. There was no school bus, and almost everyone walked. Walking to and from the school was exciting. Every day, I would stand outside patiently waiting for Mustafa to join me. And then we walk together, meeting others along the way. Listening to the sounds of the neighborhood, the sweet song of the temple, the lovely ringing of the church bell, the prayers from the mosque, meeting friends and feeling connected to the community was a blessing. During early 80s, when I entered high school, my home state was engulfed in an uprising against the influx of immigrants entering illegally from a neighboring country. Our people, fearful of being outnumbered by them and becoming a minority in our own land, began a peaceful movement demanding deportation of the illegals. But the hesitation soon deepened the chasm among the communities. Every day we listened to radio for news as village after village was burned by violent mobs from both sides. The upheaval soon reverberated through my neighborhood. One day, some activists carried out a torchless procession. I just joined impulsively. Illegal immigrants, go back, go back, go back, go back. But then, the compassionate, comforting, caring uncle, me, suddenly was overpowered by a beast, a beast of Intolerance, indifference, ignorance. And the beast roared. Illegal immigrants, go back, go back, go back, go back. As the mob entered the neighborhood of my friend, the shouting intensified. Everyone in that small Muslim community felt threatened and barricaded themselves. From a distance, I saw Mustafa clutching his little sister, ready to protect her from being harmed by anyone. Then, to my horror, someone threw a burning torch. 
As the fire burned, I saw the frightened family. I was scared for them. They were scared of me. After the incident, my friend stopped talking to me and began taking our roundabout road to school. And during classes, we sat on the opposite side. For the first time, we are not invited to Idol Fitter. I was shaken. We spoke the same language. We went to the same school. We were bound together by many ties of affinities and relationships. How did it happen? But it was happening everywhere as an atmosphere of fear and gloom descended into every community, every neighborhood, every town. One day, I was walking to school alone. As I reached the town sports stadium, I heard a voice followed by music. We are in the same boat, brother. As I neared, I instantly recognized the voice. It was Bhopan Hazarika, an artist, a performer, a cultural iconic figure of our era. Hazarika was leading a troupe of singers, artists, writers through the riot-prone countryside, singing the song of peace. As the song was being played, everyone inside the stadium was transfixed. And I witnessed something I had never seen before. A singer, my, armed only with a microphone, completely alleviating the atmosphere of fear and gloom. Then everyone lined up for an impromptu procession. People started singing while others started playing guitars, drums, flutes. Then as the open truck led by the singer entered the town main square, motorists stopped and began honking. Commuters leaned out of buses. Schoolgirls giggled to say, we are in the same boat, brother. We are in the same boat, brother. Then the procession and third, the neighborhood of my friend. From a distance, I saw his parents greeting the crowd. My heart stopped. I realized I was forgiven. Then I saw Mustafa's little sister waving at me. I nailed down, held out my hand, looked into her eyes. Can I be your brother? Then someone gave her a little bell, and she started playing it loudly. We are in the same boat, brother. 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 The voice of the singer rose. It soared higher, louder, further. And at that moment, the last man in my neighborhood was liberated. Same boat, brother. We're in the same boat, brother. 
If you dip one into one, rob the other is the same boat, brother. Oh Lord, look down from your holy place. Oh Lord, in me, what a sea of space, what a place to launch the human race. The human race. So he built him a boat with a mixed-up crew, with eyes of black and brown and blue, and that's the reason you and I have just one world and just one sky. We're in the same boat, brother. 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 If you dip one into Ghana, drop the other. It's the same boat, brother. We're in the same boat, brother. We're in the same boat, brother. One into Ghana, drop the other. It's the same boat, brother. 